So today we had the Ubisoft Ford. We're recording this on a Sunday. The Ubisoft Ford event took place. And uh, with that, they brought out the open beta for their new Battle Royale Hyperscape. And it is Let's here, and we have played it. We have played several rounds of it. And as always, if you enjoyed this content, please like, Don't subscribe, me. and bang that bell, cuz, you know, this. Ubisoft, bang, bang the bell. There's something correlated there. All right, I'm out there. I know, Austin, you played three, four, maybe five rounds, I and yeah, I played I about five. 10 or 5, 12 or something like that, I think. Um, and we jumped into it, and a little backstory into what, this battle royale is it is a hundred player battle royale and it is a futuristic they call it a futuristic urban battle royale and it's set in the world of neo arcadia and basically this is a virtual city that people dive into it's during the during uh 2054 so it's not far in the future which is weird to think about like this is only 34 years from now um that they're putting this so usually these future games are like hundreds of years out from today Now we're looking 34 years in the future instead. But uh, it's a virtual city that brings landmarks, verticality to the next level. You can engage in high stakes combat as you explore the streets, interiors, and rooftops. And uh, it has champions. It's got characters you can play as. And uh, it's all about the battle royale. But what's cool about this game is they've, they've dumbed it down in my, in my opinion, in a good way. So you have, when you're playing the game, you pick up things around the world. Weapons and hacks is what they call it. They're special abilities that they call hacks. And you can carry two hacks and two guns at any one point. And that is the gist of the game, is you pick up these items, you loot, you start firing at other people and killing people, and try and be the last surviving person or squad in the game. Um, so Austin, you've played a little bit of it. Give me your, some of your first impressions and thoughts about the gameplay, the mechanics, mobility, all that stuff from your, uh, your first couple matches. Yeah. So jumping into it. <clears throat> well, originally I was like, ah, another battle royale, like great. It, ugh, just another one. Like I'm tired of this the season pass or all the, you know, the loot and whatever, buy this and buy that. And I was just kind of sick of it, but obviously we're going to try it out and see how it compares and. When I jumped in there, yeah, you were right. It's a little dumbed down. They've kind of taken a lot of the, uh, oh, I don't even know what to call it, the, uh, I guess, tactfulness out of it and really put focused on certain elements that kind of make this game feel like it's an easygoing battle royale, like not super stressed, not like Apex when, you know, it kind of has that Overwatch feeling, but it's more, it, it does get stressful. There's a lot of things to pick up and customize your gun and get it the way you want to. And like, there's a lot of meta there that you need to kind of figure out, like how to use your abilities the right way, what people are in your squad that it's really going to affect if you're going to win or not in certain situations. And then you got, you know, Warzone where you can customize your gun out the ass and get a loadout drop and do that and, try to find the high ground or whatever. And like, there's a lot of things to take into account in all these other battle royales that make it super interesting and tactical. And, you know, I think that's what people enjoy. But when it, when I jumped into this, I was like, man, it's kind of easy going. Like, it's not that same kind of feeling that I have. Like I almost feel like I could jump in this game for a little bit, not be stressed out, have some fun in the battle royale, you know, shooter and, you know, jump out with you know without <laughs> any sweat which i you know gets pretty intense in warzone and apex and stuff like that and <clears throat> i think the way that they have it set up where you just you you pick, there's a few guns you can upgrade those guns by finding more just like it and it makes the gun a little better and then you have it also the same way it works for the abilities where you can find multiple of the abilities and you can upgrade that so I haven't got to experience too much of how that all works out. Like I found a few, I've upgraded my gun like once multiple times and some of my abilities. And I don't know exactly what that does. Uh, yeah, I can, I can talk on that real quick. Just okay, to ahead. explain that a little bit. So the, they, they call it the fuse mechanic. So whenever you, they, it's an enticement to try and stick to a few of your, your, loadouts essentially so so you pick up like a sniper rifle and you can go up and find another sniper rifle and instead of getting another gun you can go and fuse a rifle with this one and there's five tiers to the fuse mechanic and each time you fuse it if it's a weapon it increases the damage output every single time 
up mm. to five tiers. So mm-hmm. you're going to get stronger and stronger weapons each time. And then with the, the hacks, it either decreases the cooldown or increases the power of that hack. Ah, okay. And it also has a five, five tier. So for example, like invisibility, um, I think it decreases the cooldown. So like by default, it's going to be like maybe a 15 second cooldown. You upgrade it once and it drops to like maybe 12 seconds. And then it keeps making it to where you can use it more and more frequently. Um, the more of those that you fuse together and each one's got a five cap to it, which I think is pretty cool because it's um, in other games, you know, where you, you can go on the one far side of the spectrum. I feel like in Battle Royales now, like the, the most intense spectrum is PUBG where like you have attachments and you have different like, you know, weapon types and inventory and all this stuff that you have to manage while you're playing the game. And then this one brings it down to just, you have four things you have to care about and either swap out one of those four things or you continually add on to it. And they make it pretty clear when you're playing the game, because when you go up to an object, if it's something that's fusing as opposed to not, it's just, it's a yellow icon. So you can tell that it's uh, something that can be fused instead. So it's easier to spot that. And then also you can find special crates around the world. That if you batch open the crates, sometimes you can find a fully fused weapon, uh, which becomes really valuable too. So it's like a five, five tier level sniper rifle or five tier level Gatling gun um, already ready to go. So that's pretty valuable if you explore and look for those crates because they might have some already fully fused uh, weapons. So that's kind of like your elite or your epics that you're trying to track down. Yeah, I think it played. I mean, already it's super smooth in my opinion. Like it, it feels like it's ready to go um, as it should be because you said they've been working on this for like two or three years now. About two years, yeah. Yeah. So you know the the world looks pretty interesting. The way the mechanic for knowing if someone's been in the area is nice. That they, they really focus on that with like this golden screen that you can bust out and like you know someone's been there. Or someone is there, and it's a lot easier. I don't know. I guess it kind of follows the same style as the, uh, you know, there's a loot chest that's been open. Like, there's no chests. I guess there are some chests, right? Yeah, there's those chests that you can, like, bash open, which the, that's where you get, like, the fully fused weapons. Oh, and stuff. okay. Yeah, I didn't run across many of those. I think I found them one on my first Yeah, match there's, there's, there's not a lot, but yeah. if you do find it, it's definitely worth breaking it open. <clears throat> and, you know... I kind of mentioned, I think early on, I think it was with Apex. I don't know. We talked about this at some point. I was like, it'd be kind of nice to have these uh, areas where like certain sectors get, you know, like go away instead of like, you know, the map, you know, gets smaller and smaller. It's just like, well, here this sector goes away and that sector goes away and it forces people to kind of move into different areas that, and they have to, they're forced to kind of fight each other. And that's kind of what it does now. Like it's like, hey, this sector is about to disappear. So if you don't get out, you're gonna die, type thing. And I was like, hey, look at that. <laughs> They're kind of doing what I've been wanting people to do for a while. And um, yeah, that was pretty cool, man. Like I can see this getting interesting because the way that the different mechanics work. Like I got the shield. Uh, <clears throat> what are they? What are they called? The little specials again? Hacks. Hacks. Yeah, I got the shield hack and I got the health hack. So. I would go into battle, I'd shoot a few people, and I'd get hit, and I'd, you know, if I'm starting to really take some damage, I'll put my shield hack on, I'll run away, and I'll then I'll put down my health hack, and I'll boost my health back up, and then I go back into battle, and that, that stuff refreshes pretty quickly, and I was surprised. But some people had, like, you know, the warp hack, and then they have a bounce hack, so, like, you can throw, you can aim this hack that will throw whoever's in this area out in every direction, depending on where they are when you when you place it. And the one that I really liked for battle was the mine hack. Because, like, if I knew someone was coming or I know there's going to be someone right here, I could decently throw the, or, like, warped in this mine hack that would be really close by, and it would just... It's a tracking grenade, basically. So it would go yeah. after them and hurt them. And they it take down, like, a third of their health, maybe even half, and it'd be easy to finish them off. And I got a lot of kills like that. And I was like, that is sweet. <laughs> like, little tactical things like that. And the verticality, I thought it might be a little overbearing but found it very it suited very well for this game the way it's all set up it, it kind of feels like Fortnite meets i don't know overwatch apex some kind of hybrid of all that yeah a little bit i definitely i definitely get some like overwatch vibes just as far as like the way that the the players control and like the way you move around the map the the mobility is what my there's there's two things i really like about this game one is the mobility 
Um, and then two is like just the simplicity or the, the verticality of it. So, which they both kind of go hand in hand, but I like the simplicity of the gun mechanics, which is nice. not having to worry about that stuff. And then just how quickly you can move around the world. So like, I feel like they definitely guide you towards like rooftop, like navigation, like jumping from rooftop to rooftop and stuff. And this is like a kind of digital version of Paris that they've recreated because they have like Notre Dame in here and stuff like that, which is cool. Mm -hmm. Um, the, the things that I, I, don't like about it though that there was definitely some issues when I first came into it because me and uh, our friend of the podcast and a uh, community member David uh, was uh, we were trying to play together and we couldn't that just wasn't possible um, we would go and invite friends and that's like a it's it's part an issue of just the fact that it's a beta but also an issue with you play and the way that that technology is integrated because um, when you're in the game and you go to invite somebody, it opens up the you play sidebar and you go to invite them. And then when they get an inv- or get a request, then yeah. So some of the, the negatives we had was, uh, I was playing with David, one of our community members, and, uh, we were trying to get connected with each other and you play just has the integration with you play is not great yet. Um, because whenever you go in there, you go to invite somebody, you click invite, it pulls open the, uh, you play like overlay and then you click on the person, you click invite, they get an invite, it, it pops up in the top right corner, they click OK, and then it doesn't connect them. Like it says joining game and it just errors out. So they have a bug right now, clearly with this, and you can't squad up. And the other thing with this is that apparently it's going to be, it's currently three squad limit, which I kind of am concerned about that because that's one of the things I still don't like about Apex is that it's a limited to three people. And I feel like you're always going to have like that one extra person you want to be able to throw in there, but you can't because you're limited to three. And uh, I hope they open that up because they have a third tab in here. They have solos, squad, and then one other one. So I don't know if that's going to be duos or if that's going to open up to be like four person or something or some other yeah, kind of game mode. Maybe. maybe quads. Yeah, that'd be sweet. So that would be that would be a nice feature, but um, we had that issue. I also had crashed three times while I was playing. Really? Um, in different periods, yeah. So wow. that was that was frustrating. Um, so I had some bugs, but it's an open beta, so it's going to happen. Um, not as much in the game, but I had crashes when I first like launched into it, mm-hmm. and then they have this thing when you open in the game, you're like in a virtual like. Like the the menu is like a 3D world you navigate through, mm. which I is kind of cool but kind of frustrating because in order to invite a friend you have to walk up to like the friend thing and then click f you can't just like do it like when you want to play you can just look at the play uh portal and press f and it teleports you there but if you're trying to add your friends or look at your locker of cosmetics you have to walk up to it there is a quick button to get to your squad menu that i found that's hidden in the menu that you press o and that pulls open the squad list but there's no button for the locker. Um, so that's kind of weird that it's like, why not just make a menu out of it instead of, I mean, this 3D world's kind of cool if I was in VR, but it's not as cool when I'm playing a game itself. Mm-hmm. But um, interesting. But overall, overall, I mean, I, I think I like it, but um, I'm just, I'm, I'm concerned about like the battle pass. They have the battle pass in here. It takes a while to, to, uh, to um, increase your battle pass. You don't get points by just playing the game. You only get points by completing it bounties, dailies, and weeklies. So that's mm. the way you level up and progress through the battle pass, um, which is kind of like Apex. But at least in Apex, you also get progression by just playing the game. So there's that component. And the cosmetics themselves, like they have these eight different characters in this game that you can pick from. But I don't care about any of the eight characters that are in the game. Like visually, they're fine, but there's nothing, there's no no personality to any of them. They haven't set up the stage for like, hey, you want to play as, you know, freaking Roadhog or May or whatever because they're really cool and interesting and relate to you. They're just like eight diverse looking people that have no differentiations between them all. Yeah. So I can't get attached to like an avatar necessarily. And I don't know what the the skins are going to be like that are going to really kind of suit my fancy when it comes to that. Um so I'm, I'm concerned about the longevity of the game because I, I like the gameplay and the moment-to-moment action is really cool. But I could see after a while it could get kind of boring just because mm-hmm. once you've gone through five buildings, every single building looks exactly the same. Yeah. And once you jump through the rooftops a lot, like it's it's basically just the same arena that you're going through over and over again. And it's not 
there's not any kind of crazy there's no story differences. to it really and there's no story to it and stuff like that which i mean you know the it's a, it's going to be a lot about the moments that you have and i did have some good moments cuz i played solo uh first time mm-hmm. the first solo match i played i got fifth place which i was super excited about i like killed it and uh, i got all the way to, towards the end i killed a couple people and then almost almost won but got nice. killed off by somebody at the very end Dang. but uh that was exciting cuz like you were saying with the uh the the the, the um the fact that we've played all these games with a circle that's closing in on you and it's very predictable and it's just like running in from the edges and going in. But this is cool in that the sectors drop off in different sporadic ways. And when I was playing the first match, I was in the bottom left corner of the map and I was staying down there for a while. And then I heard sector is closing on your area and I look in the map and here I was trapped and the only pathway up was one narrow bridge and everything else was blocked off from the larger piece at the top Mm -hmm. that hadn't been fully sectored off yet. So I was like, that's kind of badass for like a, you know, combat scenario because somebody could strategically see, Oh, there's a whole section of people that could be down here in this corner. Let's pin them and get ready for them as they come up down this narrow pathway and, you know, use that to your advantage. Right. Um, and the last thing that we haven't talked about yet that I want to mention is deaths. So when you die, um, you can still play the game. And this part is kind of interesting to me because uh, you're you die you're you're still in the game world, but you're like an invisible ghost avatar, and you can follow your friends around, and you can still talk to your friends and communicate and even spot for them while you're dead. And then whenever you can, to the way you come back is you have to find another dead body of an enemy, so your team or somebody else in the game has to kill somebody, and you go up to that that marker where they died stand on it press f and that alerts your friends hey come revive me and they come to that point press a button hold it down and then respond to you at that point so you have a lot more chance of coming back and you can do that repeatedly i think and it's it's just a different take on like the respawn mechanic that we've seen like with the buy station and war zone and stuff like that or the air balloon and and apex and stuff but this is this is kind of cool how they how you can still engage with your friends um, in the game and kind of help them while they're trying to get you back, right? Um, and come back to life. So that I don't know really how nice. long that actually works for. You know, um, like that goes away at a certain point, like the gulag. It doesn't. Oh, really? I was, I was in the. I was the last five squads. Dang. Um, the last four squads, and my squad mates were like, "Hey, Vertigo, can you find a spot near you?" And I went to it, and there was four squads left, and they were able to bring me back. Um, and we were able to keep fighting. Mm, so I, it cool. might be when it gets down to the final two squads, maybe it cuts off, but yeah, it mm-hmm. can go up to the very end. But you have to have dead bodies you can spawn on. So once you get towards oh. the end, there's a lot less dead bodies that you can, you know, that are available. Right, right, um, right. That makes sense. To work from. So yeah, it makes or it like harder. once the sections drop off, you know, those dead body spawn points also, of course, drop off. Yeah, that's so, true. Um, so it's pretty cool, uh, cool mechanic though. Um, and then they also have the Twitch integration, which is interesting, where if you're a Twitch streamer, uh, you can attach your Twitch account to the game, um, which also, Austin, next time you play it, make sure you log in through Twitch Prime because you're going to get some special Battle Pass rewards by having oh, your Twitch account oh, attached to it. That's cool. Yeah, um, for this like open beta duration. But um, nice. when you attach your Twitch account to the game, when you're streaming, um, people that are watching you, viewers that are watching, can vote on game-changing events and not only that affect the entire game that's playing. So if a streamer is in the game with you, uh, you'll hear like a little like ringing noise that sounds like a phone calling you, and mm. it says the viewers, the viewers have picked the next event, and it can either be like a health kit drop, or it can be like low gravity, or like reveal all the players on the map and right. alter the state of the game. That's awesome. And then, yeah, so I forgot those yeah, kinds of I things. I forgot to even cool. mention that. Yeah, and uh, they said eventually they're going to add in features such as squad invites. So if you have a squad and you're a streamer and you're playing and you're streaming, people can join you from your Twitch channel and join into your game and join your squad. Um, or also, there's some battle pass progression features that are going to be available too. I don't know what that looks like, but um, that's going to be part of the Twitch extension as well. So, yeah, man, I'm some excited. interesting ideas. Yeah, seriously, uh, it could actually be a pretty good game. Yeah, yeah, there's some potential. Um, you know, every everyone's kind of had a different opinion. Like I was when I was talking to David, he he doesn't like it as much as as uh, 
like I enjoyed the mobility part of it and he's not as into it, but mm-hmm. he's, he's like, you know, bit, he's huge in overwatch too, which I was surprised that he didn't like it as much, but he had different, different quirks about it. And a lot of it is just due to the bugs. I think that are really kind of plaguing the game, but, um, I'm anxious to see what everybody thinks about it as the game continues to improve and get better. If, uh, you know, it, if it stay, it has staying power or not. Right, right. Yeah, that's that's the thing I'm curious about. We'll see how far it goes. Because, like, there was a cycle. I mean, it seemed to have grown since we watched, like, we're, you know, playing it and stuff. People really liked it. And then, uh, you know, we kind of fell off of it. It's still going. But I just don't think it has a staying power to really do anything. Wait, this game? Wait. No, the cycle. Uh, <clears throat> oh, shit, yeah. yeah. No, that definitely, that's that thing. That game's dead. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> they're still That's working on it, back. and I think they had an interesting idea. But yeah, I don't think it's gonna last. It just need a lot more um, pizzazz to it, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. It was, I mean, it was very repetitive um, right. in the in the right. gameplay, and it was really hard to kill other players. It's true. So that was, it was. That, those were the two I think kind of issues with this. But this one is the time it kills. Not as bad as it seemed like when I was watching the streams, because I was watching the streams, I was watching people go around, and it was like. Man, it takes forever to kill somebody. But if you have the right gun combination, like you can knock somebody's health down really fast, which is cool. So, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, right.